guys learning with rich here in this video let's talk about uh still we are on the column so let's continue our discussion about uh columns in revit structure uh 2021 so last time we have learned how to create our steel columns our project okay so this time around i'm going to show you how to uh, create column offset okay so as you can see here in our model this is the same model that we are working on here so if I'm going to zoom in here so we have four columns here so let's say for example I want to add an offset okay to this column like for example for these two columns here I want to offset that here on the left side with a distance of four feet so if I'm going to select this column so you will notice here that, as you can see, it's it's our hollow structural section column. And then you can see here the properties. So the column location here is C3. Okay, so if I select this one, the column location of that is D3. So notice that once we add here an offset, okay, so I'm going to select this column using window selection. Window selection is from... Uh, left going to right okay so make sure you only select the two object or the two elements so I'm going to select both and then I'm going to use the move tool okay so move tool okay so I'm going to pick the base point here and then I'm just going to type 4 for 4 feet and then enter and then I select here modify to deselect the object so once I select this column you will now notice here on the property that the column location now is updated to C3 and then the offset distance of minus 4 feet. Okay? So that's how it works. So that's how you add a column offset. So let's try to do that as well on the other two here. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to move that. Move here to the right and then I'll type 4 and then enter there you have it okay so basically that's how you uh, add a column offset or that's how you create a column offset okay so if I select this one so you will now see here the column location is C4 and then 4 feet so it's positive because it's going to the right but for this one since we move this to the left so you will notice that the value here is minus is negative negative four feet okay now the next thing that we are going to learn is let's try to create a column schedule okay so we know that we can uh, right click the schedules here and then you can create this but there is actually another tool here that is called new graphical column schedule okay so I'm going to select this one by the way you can also go to your view tab and then you can look for the schedules drop down here and then you can see the graphical column schedule so it's the same okay so i'm going to select this and there you go so you just created now your column schedule so it's now added here in our project browser the graphical column schedule if you click that so there's your schedule of course you can still right click that and then if you want you can rename your column schedule so let us zoom in here let's have a look around so as you can see there's our column so right now the representation of our column here it's just a single line okay so these columns that we have here uh, behaves like our uh, real column in our model okay so that's why it is being affected by our detail level here so currently the detail level is coarse. If I change that to fine, you will now see what it happens. There it go. Okay, so how about if I change that to coarse? So it looks like that. If I change to medium, it looks like that. If I change that to fine, so it looks like that. Okay, so I'm just saying that our columns here on the schedule, on the column schedule, behaves like your uh, real uh, beam or a real column in your project so meaning to say it also affected by our visual style so if I change this to uh, shaded color 
so it's changed the shade you see there's a shade there or a realistic let's check it out there's you, there you go so it's realistic column okay and then you can also see here where it is located so this column that we have here where that is from level one up to the roof that we created is on our a1 there's the column location and then we also have here the column offset right it also includes the column offset remember we have uh, offset our columns there there okay and one thing that you can also do here on our column schedule is that you can modify the properties of the col uh, graphical column schedule so like for example uh, you can specify the text appearance for example I'm going to zoom in here okay so I just zoom in so you can select the text appearance and then you can modify here the title text you could change that so let's say oh i want it bold i want to change the width to i like a point eight okay so point eight point eight uh, point eight and then i'll select your okay and there you go okay so that's how you update your uh, text okay so you just need to explore your properties Okay, you can also change here the material types. Okay, you can filter it out. So you can select edit. So let's say you only want the steel. So you can select check none. Just select the steel. And then you can select your OK. Right? Okay, see? Dates. Right, so you just need to explore this one out so we don't have time to explore all of the options here on the graphical column schedule properties. And another thing that I would like to uh, discuss is aside from the column offsets, aside from the creating a column schedule, I'm going to quickly show you how to add a slanted column. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here the level one and then I'm just going to pan my drawing here. Okay, so I'll just create another uh, set of grids here just to show you how to use the slanted column. Okay, so to do that, I'll create first my grids. So I select the grid. Grid. Okay, so I'll just use this one. So let's say I'll just create this one here. So I'll just create one here. Okay, so I'll just click this. You know already how to create grids, right? So let's copy this. How about I'll just call this uh, letter M. Oops. Oops, sorry. So I'll just make it M. Okay, so let's copy this. Copy multiple constraint. Alright, so let's copy that. Okay, how about I copy it uh, 10 feet. There you go, 10 feet. There you go. Let's say uh, 50. Oops, that's too long. Okay, so let me just delete this. Copy again. Select. Copy. Multiple constraint. Okay, so let's copy this around 30. Just like that. 30. Okay, then let me create a horizontal grid. So select, right click, create similar. Let's create one here. Okay, there you go. Create one here. Create one here. Okay, so I'm just quickly creating my grids here. So without uh, exact distance. Okay. Alright, so to create your uh, slanted column, so what you can do is you can go to the, or let us just create the same type of column that we have here. So I'm going to select this column, okay, and then after that, I'm just going to, uh, while that column is selected, I'm going to right click, remember the create similar, so you just select create similar. Alright, so here on our placement, there is an option, slanted column. Okay, so I'm going to select the slanted column. So I select that one. Okay, so once you select that, you need to specify here the first click and then the second click. So what I want to do is I want to create my 
a slanted column from let's say uh, level one to level two. So what I'm gonna do is, right, for my uh, second click, I want this to be level two without an offset distance, just zero. And then for the first click, let's say I want that level one. Okay, so my first click will gonna be on level one. My second click will gonna be on level two. So I'll just turn off the 3D snapping here. So I'll select that and check. Okay, so let us now select our first click will be on level one. So I'm going to pick one here. Okay, make sure it snaps at the intersection correctly. Click. So that's our first click. And then here's my second click. There you go. Right. Okay, so some columns in the project are excluded from the graphical. That's okay. All right. All right, so this is now our column. So if I'm going to select this, or how about I'll just go to the 3D view, default 3D view, and then let's see how it looks like. So there you go. So there is your uh, slanted column. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this on my level 1. I'll just copy that. So I select copy multiple constraint. Okay. So I'll just pick the base point here. One, two, and then three. That's okay because we it's just telling us that some columns in the project are excluded from the graphical column schedule view. That's okay. So I'll just select modify here. Okay. There you go. Okay, and then after that, I'll just create a normal column. So column, okay, I'll just select this, create similar. So right click, create similar. Okay, from level one, oops, vertical column. Height from level one until uh, level two. There you go. Okay, and then I'll just pick one here, here, here. And then modify to terminate. Then let us select these three columns. Again, I'll just copy, base point, click, click. All right. And then let's go to the 3D view and let's see how it looks like. There you have it. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's how you create your slanted column. And aside from that, um. You can also attach your columns to a steel. Let's say, for example, if you're going to create a beam. Okay, so let me go back again to level one. Okay, let me let us uh, further play around on our column. Let us add some beams. So let's say I select the beam here. So I click the beam. Okay, so I'll just use this option here. So for the first point of my beam so I'm going to pick one here okay so make sure the chain here is checked so that you will be able to continuously create your chain without breaking a point okay so I'm going to pick one here let's say I'm going to pick it uh, all the way all the way here for example oh, how about all the way here <laughs> okay there you go so there's now my beam Okay, so it's the same. So let me pick here one, two, and then I can just pick all the way here. Okay, it's your preference. So escape once so that you do not totally terminate the beam tool. Don't worry, we were uh, we are going to have a separate discussion about the beam. So I'm just quickly showing you an, uh, another options that we can use uh, using our column. Okay, I'm going to show you how to attach it. Okay, so if I go to the 3D view. Mm, all right, so let me select this. Select. Select, select, select. Okay, all right, on the front view. So I go to the front view. So I'm going to copy this. Okay, oh, I'll just, how about just move? So I'll just move that. Pick the base point here, and then let's disjoin this. So let's say I'm going to pick it somewhere here, okay, and then select your modify, okay. So just like in um, architectural, 
in, in architectural, you can attach also your uh, column to your PIM. So to do that, all you have to do is to select your column. Oops, do not select the analytical column. So just select the column here. And then there's an option here, attach top base on our modify column. So I select this one and then I'm going to click where I want to attach that. So it's now attached there, right? So that's how you attach your column to a beam. So just select, attach top base, and then you click. There you go. Right? So select, oops, sorry. Select, attach top base, and then click. Okay, so select, attach top base, click. Right? Okay, so this is another trick that you can use for your column just in case you want to attach that to a PIM. Okay, so you can also do this. So select, oops, sorry, select, attach top base, click. Select, attach top base, click. Okay. Right. Okay, so basically that's how your columns work in Revit. So in this video, we have learned how to create column offset. We have learned how to create a column schedule. And then we also learned how to add slanted column. And then the last part, we learned how to attach our column to our steel or to our PIM. Okay. So hopefully you learned something from this video, guys. If you had any questions, suggestions you can put it on the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can okay so once again thank you for watching have a nice day